there's someone listening to this and this is their first time they're hearing about the idea of true price. So um, yeah, so maybe they're wondering, wait, so you mean I have not been paying the true price? I mean, the products I buy from the supermarket. So you can sort of help us explain what actually is true price. Yeah, so a true price is the market price plus the social environmental cost in the whole value chain of a product. Yeah. Uh, take, for example, when you use um, chemical fertilizer yeah. uh, that is produced in a um, very intense and heated chemical um, process. Gas yeah. is uh, used for that. That is super CO2, um, kind of it emits a lot of CO2. Yeah. We account for that in the process of making any uh, call it uh, agriculture product, we account for that chemical process and the CO2 emis- emitted. That is uh, very harmful for the environment. We yeah. say, what does it cost to absorb this, to to kind of compensate for the emission? And, you know, you have to probably build um, or cultivate trees for that or um, um, regenerate or c- kind of um, the, the landscapes yeah. to absorb uh, CO2, any form of carbon sequestration is needed. That costs something, that's a price, and we add that price into the, into the um, call it um, invoice administration. Yeah. And then, yeah, we do that for all the externalities, including the social ones. So, for example, under earning, under payment of farmers and workers, that is a, a very important one as well. We just look at what is needed to get a decent living, what is currently paid or earned, yeah. what is the gap, and we add that gap. And if you do that, you end up with a higher price for all of the products, yeah. for sure. There's not a single product after decades of talking about sustainability. Yeah. Not a single product that's actually with a true price. So, you know, maybe a few cents more, maybe 25%, maybe doubling the price. You can yeah. do the same for health. So with lots of health, obesity, and all sorts of cardiovascular diseases uh, from salt, sugar, and fat intake, uh, all of those things, they add up to additional expenditures um, by um, the health um, administration if, if, if uh, or individuals that have to pay for that. Yeah. We'd anticipate that at that, well, if you have that information, you can improve. Um, we have a store, I'm sitting here in a True Price store in Amsterdam, yeah. but we also have a network of stores. We have now the first uh, True Price store in the world, an actual supermarket, um, organic by default. So everything there is organic, but it's yeah. still not enough. Obviously, there's a lot of um, ecosystem services that are taken through the cultivation of that land. Water uh, levels are um, lowered by, or lowered by the agriculture, which yeah. leads to a crop um, leads to a call it um, monoculture yeah. which actually takes out the, the fish and, and and destroys the aquaculture that's another another example of a frequently call it um, seen externality so all of those things we account for that yeah and then we actually calculate what it requires to restore if you can compensate if you can't restore prevent to make sure it doesn't happen in the future and also to um, penalize to kind of create a sort of fine because we believe this shouldn't have happened in the first place. Yeah. And it's actually, retribution is an important principle here because many people suffer and yeah. that is in oftentimes it's actually in in, in um, sharp contrast with the law, for example, child labor, yeah. forced labor. We have a situation where we have in the current global production and consumption economy, you have you know, between let's say 10 to 40 million um, modern slaves which is kind of outrageous, right? Yeah. Whether it's, um, call it uh, cocoa uh, production in um, West Africa, whether it's shrimp production in uh, Southeast Asia, whether it's um, coconut uh, production also in Southeast Asia, there's many cases, uh, also, also even of child slaves. It's it's un, it's unheard of. And obviously yeah. many of those uh, modern slaves are in informal markets, uh, also in prostitution, but there's, definitely a very significant number of those working in uh, also in bonded labor in fashion industries yeah but that's you know it's it's i i just cannot comprehend um you know that we can have this production consumption economy we can create uh, we can fill the shelves with yeah. those products literally yeah. with the fingerprints still on our, our cell phones of these you know um exploited people it's unheard of it's unbelievable and you know that's what we try to address it's um yeah it's really for me to save the world as well obviously on the on the on the environmental side yeah you know there's so much trouble um that we see and i i'm not saying we should abolish 
production and consumption in the first place. I'm just yeah. saying that, you know, we we have to really acknowledge the the, the, the facts. Look the beast in its mouth. Yeah, I would say call ourselves morally bran- bankrupt. I think that is the least that we can do. We are, as a production and consumption economy, morally bankrupt globally. Yeah. Trade systems aren't, you know, ac- actually, you know, they they aren't ethically um, in sync with any, uh, call it humane idea of what what you could consider moral. Yeah. And you know, we have to build it up from there. We have to build it up from scratch. We need to take a, we we can we can kind of get perspective and yeah. perhaps some hope out of that reconstruction of the economy yeah. but we have to call it a crisis a a complete total crisis yeah 